Okay, a very warm welcome to the webinar session co-organized by the Asian Institute of Alternative Dispute Resolution and the International Commercial Dispute Prevention and Settlement Organization on the topic of rethinking alternative dispute resolution in the midst of COVID-19. Without further ado, let us start the webinar session with the welcome remarks to be delivered by AIADR President, Dr. Professor Sundra Raju. Let us welcome. Thank you, Heather. His Excellency, the Secretary General of the Council, Mr. Liu Chao, esteemed panelists, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you. Welcome to this webinar as organized by the Asian Institute for Alternate Dispute Resolution jointly with the Commercial Dispute Prevention and Settlement Organization, Ipakso. We are in the crux of significant economic and trade developments and commercial relationships, especially on the Belt and Road Initiative. Grievances and conflicts are bound to happen. And the main policy directive and objective is to manage such conflict and promote sound relations to create a system for effective prevention and settlement of disputes. The setting up of IPAXO as an international organization jointly with various stakeholders, including legal service providers, chambers of commerce, research institutions, universities, and other stakeholders around the world is a true game changer. In its global outreach, particularly along the Belt and Road countries, it will create a holistic dispute prevention, management and resolution structure aimed at achieving business efficiency. Today, we are very fortunate that His Excellency, the Secretary General of IPAXO, Dr. Liu Chao, is taking time to deliver a keynote speech on IPAXO. Thank you so much, Dr. Liu Chao. By way of introduction, His Excellency, the Secretary General of IPAXO, Dr. Liu Chao, is also the Director General of the Legal Affairs Department of CCI. He holds a PhD in Law and Economics. Before joining CCPIT, he worked for more than 15 years in the Ministry of Commerce of the People's Republic of China. From 2005 to 2008, he worked as the Economic and Commercial Counselor's Office in the mission of the People's Republic of China to the European Union as team leader of TDI and TBT SPS unit. He has in-depth experience, knowledge, and is considered very accomplished in dealing with trade frictions and trade remedy investigations. He has even taught as part of the lecturer team for training Chinese commercial counselors going abroad. Now, Dr. Liu Chao joined CCPIT in 2014 to set up the new Legal Affairs Department. In May 2015, he was appointed as the Deputy Director of the Legal Affairs Department. And from 2015 December to May 2018, he was appointed Head of CCPIT's Enterprise Right Protection Center. Now, Dr. Liu Chao is responsible for coordinating a wide range of legal affairs, coping with economic and trade friction, which is, I think, very, very important in the present day, legal risk prevention, enterprises' right protection, foreign economic and trade negotiation, foreign related commercial legal services, commercial mediation and arbitration. He has acted as arbitrator for CTEC and CMEC, and uh, you must agree with me, he's a most accomplished uh, uh, Secretary General of IPAXO, and we are delighted to have him today. I present to you His Excellency, the Secretary General of IPAXO, Dr. Liu Chao. Thank you so much.
distinguish the guests, experts, and the friends. Now I would like to confirm that uh, my sound can be heard by everybody. I don't know whether it is clear now. Thank you. Good afternoon. It is a great pleasure to join to jointly hold the seminar with the AI idea this afternoon. I must to say that uh, with the help of my old friend, Dr. Sandra, we work very hard, we work together and to push to found establishment of ICPASO. Uh, it's a must uh, for me to explain the name of ICDPASO. Sometimes the people call it ICC puzzle, sometimes ICD puzzle, and sometimes it puzzle. I say that's fine. Today I say ICC puzzle because my friend Dr. Sandra say ICC puzzle, so that's fine. Everybody, COVID-19 has brought us online. With the representatives and the friends from the business community and the legal professions, I would like to take this opportunity, a very, very good opportunity, to share with all of you ICPASO's establishment mission and version. I'm sure that uh, most of you have already heard the news of ICPASO's establishment. The inaugural settlement received the full support from political, business, and legal circles. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang and the Malaysia Premier Minister Mohidin Yassin sent congratulatory letters. Thank Thank him, thank them very much. Major international legal organizations, including ANSIC, WAPO, Asian African Legal Consultative Organization, expressed the congratulations in various means. Key political figures from more than 10 countries affirmed ICPASO's establishment. I believe. This is a great event for international commercial community, for international legal community, a victory for the global business community, and more importantly, a victory for multilateral reason. As the Secretary General of ICPASO, I will firstly introduce the aspiration of ICPASO. Everybody know that long before the COVID-19 pandemic, there was a search of a deglobalization trend in the world. Protagonism and utilitarianism were arriving. Some countries took measures to restrict trade and investment in the name of national security. Everybody know which countries take such measures. The AB of the WTO was paralyzed with the interruption from the United States. Exit and the World Bank started rule re reversion to keep up with the times. In a word, we can say that the multilateral trading system and the cross-border investment encountered challenges every day. At the present, the COVID-19 epidemic around the world had not been effectively contained. With more unstable factors, the world economy's recovery is faltering. The habits of a human being, traditional international interaction numerous, the world economic patterns are undergoing profound change. With such a public health crisis, after initial shock, 
countries start to establish mechanisms for coordinating the response and the risk prevention. Under such background, risk prevention awareness has become the key word of the times. The dispute resolution market also witnessed great reforms. In terms of litigation, some countries embark on specialized judicial organs. International commercial courts are expected to provide flexible, professional, and efficient litigation channels. In terms of IDR, arbitration and mediation have also ushered in reform opportunities. Existing institutions have reformed the rules one after another. Countries actively participate in the new mediation convention. With the joint efforts, traditional IDR market is expected to be refined revitalized. In a period of major change rarely seen in our century, it has become the common aspiration of the global business community to integrate resource and make full use of international mechanism. Only in this way can we achieve free flow of cross-board trade and investment. Only in this way can we achieve a market-oriented, rule-based business environment. This belief is firmly shared among the founding members of ICPASO. That is 45 business associations, legal service agencies, and academic institutions. They are from more than 20 countries and regions in Asia, Europe, Africa, and Latin America. As the founding members of, I, of ICPASO, we, together with the AIIDR, continue to uphold confidence in global governance and multilateralism. We continue to strongly agree on dispute prevention. This is why we jointly initiate ICPASO. Secondly, I would like to explain ICPASO's purpose and mission. As a brand new international organization, ICPASO is a non-government, non-profit organization, headquartered in Beijing, China, and step by step, we will have offices in different countries and regions. It aims to serve the limited community with a diversized dispute prevention and settlement service. It adheres to the principle of extensive consultation, joint contribution, and shared benefits. The business departments of ICPASO include uh, publicity and the training, compliance construction, bankruptcy and reorganization, law ascertainment, ascertainment, arbitration mediation, and the investment dispute settlement, etc. Here, I would like to uh, explain detailed to everybody that uh, what is prevention. We all know that uh, for the disputes, the first step is the law assignment. That means we should know the laws, the rules in different countries and regions. It's easy to say, but in practice, it is very difficult very, very difficult to know, to learn the law, the regulation, the rules in different countries and the regions. 
For example, now many Chinese enterprises, when they would like to invest in different countries, the first thing is how to get the exact information of laws and regulations in the aimed country and region is not easy. So for example, we will establish a center for law assignment. We have done some things concerns the laws and the rules in different countries. It's a work, it's a job, not easy. Then if we know the laws, we know the rules, then we should know if there are something change, the policy change. We should have an early warning system, an early warning mechanism. Many, many enterprises they want to have such detailed information, but uh, not easy. So we would like to establish a center of early warning and provide the information to enterprises. And now more and more countries have published, you know, the different uh, rules, the different uh, regulations. So the comp companies have to obey. So this is the compliance construction. So then, if possible, we will have a center of compliance. This compliance is not only the compliance in one country. This is a international. This is the cross-board compliance construction. If both industries have the problems, have the dispute, how to let them to know, to see down, to have a good solution. So then we will have a center of lobby. We will have a lunch, a center of consultation. So that means, for example, uh, we every day we have anti-dumping case, anti-dumping cases from different countries. <clears throat> the industry bring the compliance before the government people. So they anti-dumping investigation. For the investigation, the industry have paid more and more. The government government people have to pay more attention to investigate the details. And then maybe we take the anti tumbling measure. But if the government, I mean from, the, from one country, uh, is not satisfied with the solution, with the duty, so they bring the case before WTO. And now everybody know the exact situation of WTO. Before the end of this month, the AB of WTO, that means nobody in the AB of WTO. So that means uh, if the company, if the industry have the intention to bring the case before the government people to have the anti-dumping investigation and to have the duty and to bring the case before WTO, normally that is three or four years. It's too long. This is, this is a long procedure and uh, more and more industry have to pay the money. But I believe that both industries in different countries and regions, they don't want to have such long procedure, the long, uh, the war, the battle. So we will have the center the center of consultation uh, of lobby. So they aim to save the money for companies, for industry.
everybody know that the importance of a training, the importance of publicity. So we will have such a center. And uh, because of the policy, because of the environment of business, some companies will have the bankruptcy situation. And also they will have the opportunity of reorganization. But the information, how to have such information. So we will have a center, establish a center of bankruptcy and reorganization to help the billion people have such information. And we will have a center of standards. If we have the same, the common standards, we can prevent many, many of the disputes. Because of the different standards in different countries, it leads many, many disputes. So it's a master that we will have a center of standards. The last but the most important that is we should have our professional people, professional staff, professional experts. So the puzzle we have a center, you know, of a human being, of a human being, professional human being. So then we will have the people, the expertise to help us to prevent the dispute and also the settlement of the dispute. So anyway, for prevention, we will have such centers, the different centers and uh, to do the different things, but the aim is to help the industry people to prevent the dispute. So then you will have the question that uh, after the prevention, you know, sometimes we, we are doing our best to prevent the dispute, but the, the reality is finally we will have the disputes at the end of the day because of uh, the different, uh, you know, regions. So how to set, how to have the settlement of dispute. So now I think the traditional idea already there. They are the mediation, uh, the arbitration, and also the investment, you know, dispute settlement. This is the traditional. But uh, I would like to put the new elements to the traditional idea, to the traditional, I think, for mediation. The mediation, now we will have the mediation court, the mediation court. So that means, for example, Malaysia AI idea can send the mediator. In China, we will send the mediator. So they, that means that it's a jointly procedure by the mediators from different countries to make sure that uh, the companies, the enterprises have a satisfied uh, resolution. And for commercial arbitration, commercial arbitration, everybody knows that uh, now many institutions are doing their best to provide the service to companies now. I know they have done a great job. Uh, the commercial arbitration, I mean, in the framework of ICPASO, we would like to have a, a money saving, a money saving procedure, a money saving process. And also we will uh, make use of, I mean, the different, uh, you know, languages to make the people, the billion of the people feel comfortable to face uh, the dispute uh, uh, resolution. So anyway, we will do something different. We will do something uh, cheaply, but uh, with a high quality. But we know that uh, we have to learn from the different, uh, uh, you know, institutions 
we will learn from the different uh, think tanks. So anyway, this is a full chain a service. So that means on one hand, we prevent the dispute. And on the other hand, to resolution, you know, of the, this dispute uh, failed. Anyway, this is just, uh, you know, our ideas and now we are pushed to have the exact rules. And by the way, I also have one idea of, you know, the litigation. The litigation, you know, in different country, countries and the regions, uh, the system is, is, is different. We would like to have the information which uh, countries, I mean, the commercial court are friendly or uh, fairly to uh, companies. We would like to have such evaluation information to let the people to, you know, uh, have uh, more detailed information. So then it's because it's linked to the business environment. Uh, this is just the beginning. I have no opportunity to communicate with the, the cause in different countries. Until now, I have no such opportunity. But anyway, I believe uh, it's, uh, it's an idea, anyway. Uh, finally, I would like to share with you Ipasso's version uh, for the future. I'm very glad to share with uh, all of you that uh, in less than one month after the establishment of Ipasso, we have received numerous positive response from all over the world. Requests for dispute service, inquiries for cooperation, and the membership applications keep coming into our mail boxes. Among them, a founding member from Russia sought help for several cross-board trade cases. And for these cases, it's not a mediation cases, not arbitration. That is, they have the potential, they have the potential dispute. And now they want to have a good solution through our efforts to help both parties to understand each other and to have the solution. So now our staff people working very hard to see how to uh, find the solution. It's not easy because if we follow the procedure of mediation, that's fine, we have the procedure. If arbitration, that's fine, we have the procedure. But before the mediation, before the arbitration, both parties uh, would like to have the solution how to do. So this is, uh, it, it, it's interesting, but now uh, the staff uh, people is working very hard, are working very hard to see how to do. We believe we will have a, a good solution. And a very, very famous institution, that is Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyor in England, I think, contact us for cooperation and would like to have our membership. So this is very, very positive, very, very positive. Uh, today, the seminar, I think, is the first seminar. Yes, it's the first seminar after establishment of ICPASO. I thank my friend uh, Sandra, Professor Sandra, very much. It marks the first joint event between ICPASO and its founding members. It is of great commemorative significance. As a brand new organization with the trust and the support from all sides. We deeply feel that the mission is glorious, faced with the new opportunities and the new challenges. We know we should have the responsibilities and have a long way to go. 
uh, in the future, ICPASO, with the help of founding members, will strive to achieve three goals. The first one is building a new platform to enrich impetus into international economic and trade cooperation. ICPASO will strengthen cooperation among all members under the principle of extensive consultation, joint contribution, and shared benefits. By reducing dispute and facilitating win-win cooperation, ICPASO strive to be a third-party communication platform to achieve economic and trade cooperation. So if two, I mean, industries in different countries, if they would like to have a platform to communicate, okay, come, please. We have such platform. The second one is accelerating development and providing a new option for dispute prevention and settlement mechanism. As an innovative organization, ICPASO needs to explore and innovate along development. We will remain open-minded and inclusive. We will follow good international practice. We will carefully take account of different countries' varying conditions. In doing so, we are confident that ICPASO will rise into a broadly accepted international dispute settlement organization and a class prevention organization. The third one is exploring a new system and building consensus for a new international economic order. During these two days, I believe everybody pay more attention to the United States. And also because of the different countries' policy, the economic, the international economic order changed a lot. In Paso, we finally encourage multilateral and multi part participation to construct a rule system for dispute settlement. The system will conform to international trade and pay due respect to party autom autonomy. By means of such a system, ICPASO will work with all sides to protect that limited rights and the interests of the parties and jointly build a fair and a reasonable international economic order. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all very much to give me such opportunity to explain something of ICPASO. This is uh, just the beginning, and uh, I have invited my colleagues to, to do something more, and uh, we will send the detailed information of uh, our working plan. In very near future, we will send to Professor Sandra uh, to also uh, Mr. Cai Wenzhou. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I mean, we would like to have the joint efforts uh, together to build uh, such a new platform. We have invited the member, uh, I mean, the founding members to send uh, uh, the secretaries to Beijing, but because of the pandemic, now we have to work together, you know, uh, in the internet. But, but anyway, anyway, I believe through our common uh, efforts, we will see, we will see, we will meet in person and uh, we will do our best uh, to, serve, to provide the good service to the international community. I thank you all very much. Thank you, His Excellency, Dr. Liu Chao, Secretary General of ICPACSO, for the insightful keynote policy speech, setting out the central team and fundamentals to the seminar, which I believe are greatly beneficial to the participants and community as a whole. We will now move on to the panel discussion for the webinar on the topic of rethinking alternative dispute resolution in the midst of COVID-19. This session will be moderated by AIADR Vice President, Datuk Kwek Yi Meng, 
As a brief outline, the panel today will be discussing on the dispute settlement in commerce and business setting, the role of arbitral institutions and awareness in alternative dispute resolution, and the comparative access to court litigation and ADR, besides sharing their perspective on the responses and means of moving forward with COVID-19. Let us welcome the Honorable Mr. Moderator, Dr. Kwak, for the panel discussion. Thank you, Heda. Thank you. You hear me? Yep, thanks. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Liu Chao, Secretary General of Park Seoul, for this, uh, uh, this new thought in the midst of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Now, of course, for most of the country, uh, is we are still facing the, the, the challenge to flatten the curve uh, in this pandemic. But for China, actually, they are looking at post COVID-19 uh, new era. Uh, do you, whatever situation you're in, either post COVID-19 or in the midst of uh, facing the challenge of COVID-19, the, the fact is there will be a new normal. There will be a new situations, uh, which it won't go back to before. It's just like what we have now. We have the uh, uh, a hybrid virtual and physical uh, webinar, and then uh, it's being conducted in Malaysia, it's being conducted in China, and uh, they make known that uh, there are more than thousand uh, watching this uh, live event besides being uh, being on the Zoom. Uh, virtual platform and what we are talking now in English is it is being translated into Chinese in, in China and uh, without further ado uh, the topic today uh, one hour discussion or slightly less than one hour discussion we are going to rethink about the dispute settlement we are going to rethink what are the alternative Besides going to court, besides the traditional way to settle the dispute. And I'm, we, are, we, are, we are fortunate, we are fortunate, we are pleased to have three distinguished speakers. Let me introduce those uh, who are on the physical venue. On my left is Dr. Notch Fatri, Senior Lecturer of Construction Law and Dispute Resolution at the University Technology Malaysia. On his left is uh, Mr. Lam Wai Long. Founding managing partner of Harold Lam, and he's also the president of uh, Malaysia Society of Adjudicators. And we have one member who have been able to join us uh, uh, on the physical side is uh, the person who smiles so sweet is Mr. Michael Chai. Michael Chai is the founding managing partner of Michael Chai and Co., and he is also the chairman of the legal affairs committees of the Associated Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry who is also the founding members of IPASO. Uh, Michael, without further ado, one day if I can pass the floor to you and uh, you let us know about this, uh, uh, the dispute settlement in the business and commercial scene. Uh, you ready, Michael? Yes. Yep, please. The floor is on you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Craig. Um, His Excellency, Dr. Liu Chao, the Secretary General of IPASO, uh, Dr. Dr. Sundar Raju, President of AIADR, and the moderator, Dr. Craig Niming, fellow panelists, uh, Dr. Nofadri and uh, Mr. Lam, and uh, all the attendees of today's webinar, a very good afternoon to you. Uh, I'd like to share my screen. Okay. Can you see the screen? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank the organizer for inviting me to today's webinar uh, on rethinking ADR in the midst of COVID-19. And it's an honor for me to give a short presentation on the particular topic on 
dispute resolution in commerce and businesses. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I shall divide my presentation into five parts. They are namely, number one, the phen phenomenon of dispute resolution due to COVID-19. Uh, second is the rise of dispute prevention and dispute resolution mechanism. Number third one is to compare the various uh, dispute resolution mechanisms that are available in order to make a decision which one to use. The fourth part is on the management of dispute prevention and dispute resolution uh, in different jurisdictions. Finally, is the conclusion. Okay. Right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the first part of my paper is on the phenomenon of dispute resolution due to COVID-19. COVID-19 pandemic has caused unprecedented disruption to commerce and business sector, resulting in the sector facing serious cash flow and non-performance of contractual obligation problems. Many disputes, therefore, <clears throat> need to be resolved urgently and effectively in cost and time. The normal defenses of force major and doctrine of frustration of contract may not be available to the non-performance due to COVID-19 pandemic. If a force major clause is, is present in the contract, it is necessary to determine if the clause cover COVID-19 pandemic for it to be an extraordinary event, which is beyond the control of both parties that prevent the performance of the contractual obligation. If there is no false major clause in the contract, the doctrine of frustration may come into play to help if the conditions are satisfied. Then namely, that the COVID-19 pandemic is not due to the fault of the parties. It occurred after the contract was made. It was unforeseen at the time when the contract was entered into, and it is impossible to fulfill the obligation all these uncertainties may need to go to the court for determination, ladies and gentlemen. If the large number of dispute as a result of COVID-19 pandemic were to go to the overburdened courts for resolution, the court system will not be able to cope. It is also not effective in cost and time. The emphasis is to look for alternate dispute resolution mechanism. Ladies and gentlemen, dispute resolution is a process of resolving dispute between parties. There are, there are a number of dispute resolution processes available, some of which will be dependent upon the contract entered into between the parties. The normal one is litigation in court to determine the dispute. However, the court is overburdened with backlog and cases and, uh, and is very costly uh, and time consuming to go to the court. The, preferential, pre the preference uh, mechanism would be alternate dispute resolution. The popular one are, number one, uh, by negotiation, a process whereby parties negotiate to settle. That's the easiest and I think that is the most popular. The second type would be by way of mediation. Mediation is a process whereby, whereby an independent third party is invited to help the both parties to explore the option for compromise in order to reach a settlement. Uh, however, when a settlement is reached, uh, if one party doesn't perform the contract, 
the other party may still have to go to court for litigation. The recent uh, Singapore Convention of Mediation uh, 2018 that came into force uh, a month or two months ago uh, with 53 signatory, but only six countries rectified it. It actually gave the enforcement, foreign court to enforce a settlement agreement directly uh, instead of uh, going through the process of uh, litigation over alleged breach of the agreement. But uh, this is still early days, as you see, only six countries rectified. Malaysia is not one of those. Malaysia is a signatory country, but it has not rectified the convention. So it will be very popular when more countries uh, rectify it, and, uh, including Malaysia. Uh, the third one is arbitration. Arbitration is the process whereby an independent third party will decide, it's almost like a judge, he will make a determination of the dispute. Uh, it is very popular, especially for cross-border transaction uh, due to differences in different country. For example, uh, country with different uh, law, uh, jurisdiction of law, different languages, different religion, different level of development, uh, is always popular to have, to, to carry out arbitration. Uh, for example, there's a recent case that I was helping in. There was a dispute in Cambodia and uh, there was a clause in the contact, contract that uh, if there's a dispute, uh, it should be referred to the Singapore International Arbitration Center for uh, determination. However, one of the parties in Cambodia started litigation in Cambodian court and the Cambodian court actually allowed that to continue, whereas the, sing, sing, the arbitration that was carried out in Singapore uh, was also going on at the same time. Now the situation is in Singapore, uh, they had made an award, the arbitration center had made an award, and the party need to go to Cambodia to, to enforce the award. So there are parallel um, uh, matter going on at the same time. So, um, however, for it's popular, uh, arbitration is popular because of cross-border transaction. And in Malaysia, we have the Arbitration Act 1996 that adopt the UNCTRA rules. And Malaysia is uh, rectified, rectified New York Convention so that the award in Malaysia is enforceable in 147 jurisdiction. So these are the popular one, negotiation, mediation, and arbitration. Right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I go to the second part, which is the rise of uh, dispute prevention and a dispute resolution mechanism. Uh, I mentioned just now that due to COVID-19 pandemic, there's a big rise in the use of dispute prevention and alternate dispute resolution mechanism, especially mediation, due to their effectiveness in time and cost. And uh, under uh, COVID-19 pandemic, both parties are also willing to give and take in order to settle. This is an unprecedented time. Uh, most parties are willing to settle, but in a fair and reasonable manner. So uh, dispute prevention is very popular. Uh, parties will start to uh, negotiate to settle. Uh, and, uh, and most of the time they could. Uh, and for those who are making new contract now, they also realized it's important to have a dispute prevention clause uh, in the contract. Uh, first, the, the process of prevention uh, and then uh, dispute resolution clause as well to, to make it very 
clear, concise, and workable. For example, the future contract would contain a proper law contract, the jurisdiction clause, the type of uh, uh, alternate dispute resolution, and the process, how to get, go about it. So the new contract will have this clause in there. The second most popular process, uh, especially now in Malaysia, is mediation. When there are many, many cases that, that came out because of COVID-19, uh, the Malaysian government recently, uh, two, last month, passed a new law called the COVID-19 Temporary Measure Act 2020. This law is only effective for two years. The purpose is to reduce the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. One of which is to pro prohibit party from taking legal action against a non-performing party, only on very specific type of contract, uh, construction related type, performance bond, leases and tenancy on non-residential property, uh, professional services, events, tourism contract, some religious and pilgrimage contract. However, it excludes cases where contract has been terminated or matter resolved, bond forfeited or damages awarded, or legal action, arbitration, mediation already started. The party cannot use this act. So if parties cannot agree to settle by negotiation, now they can go for mediation in order to reach a settlement. So this is uh, uh, promoted by the government. Mediation is the main one that, uh, that is being promoted now. There is also, uh, I think just now His Excellent, Excellency Liu Chao mentioned Expasso uh, is also uh, available now. It's starting to, to help in promoting dispute prevention as well as dispute settlement. Uh, there's also another area which is new, which is online dispute resolution. Uh, this is a concept that is very popular. Hopefully one day uh, more, I'm, I believe one day more people will use it. The third part of my presentation uh, is the comparison of uh, dispute resolution mechanism. Uh, it's necessary to compare the different types uh, in order to choose which one to use to resolve dispute. Uh, for example, I'll compare the three of them. For litigation uh, in court, litigation is very certain. The judge will make a decision. The judge will look at precedent, look at the previous cases. So it's very uh, easy to forecast what might be the result. However, going to court uh, is costly in time and money. Uh, the court procedure is very inflexible. We've got to follow the, the rules of the high court. <coughs> and the, and it's, uh, the proceeding is very formal and complex. And uh, the parties are in an adversarial process. It's either a winner or loser. Uh, and the judge will impose the solution. Uh, and this is all held in public. So these are the, the disadvantage of going to court, especially now where the courts are uh, overburdened with cases. Uh, the second one is uh, uh, the, we look at the advantages and disadvantages of alternate dispute resolution mechanism. For dispute resolution mechanism, uh, the parties who have greater control, they pick their uh, mediator or arbitrator. Is the most important one is quicker and cheaper. It's less formal and simpler procedure. Uh, it avoids adversarial conflict. So the party can still maintain good relationship after uh, ADR. 
And uh, another important thing is, it's private. You know, it's only the parties will know about it. And uh, another one is, it's very accessible uh, to, to, to all. However, the disadvantage is, uh, uh, is not to emphasize on legal right. It's just to solve problem and there's a lack of precedent. And sometimes there's problem in enforcement. For example, for mediation, uh, mediation that resulted in a uh, settlement agreement, if the party breached the settlement agreement, the other parties still need to go to the court uh, to enforce it. So it's important to choose one that's cost effective and time effective, that's accessible. Uh, and uh, then, especially if there's cross-border uh, uh, transaction, you're going to see the country, the country where it's going to enforce uh, the, the, the award, whether they have a, the level of development in that particular country. Some countries don't even have arbitration uh, center. They may not even recognize arbitration. So it's important to look at all these factors to pick one that is suitable. Michael, Michael yes. one thing can wrap up in one minute. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. The management of uh, all this uh, is important, firstly, to assess uh, the dispute to see whether there's any merit, evidence, strength of the case, and uh, then prepare the case for negotiation. If it fails, uh, look at all the factors to decide on which dispute resolution mechanism is the best and, uh, and uh, go for, uh, subsequently go for enforcement. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, uh, due to COVID-19 uh, pandemic, there's a need to choose dispute resolution, which is effective in time and cost. And uh, dispute prevention and mediation appear to be getting more and more popular. However, it is still subject to efficient management of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Michael actually uh, first started with this, uh, the impact of this COVID-19 pandemic on, on possible dispute. And then one interesting that he made is, uh, of course, I know that he has no, um, uh, he got a lot of things to share, but just that I would like to uh, come to other uh, speakers so that I actually cut short uh, on his speech. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I, I definitely would love the, 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 uh, for him to make concluding remark. And also I know that there's one question being posed to him. Uh, one interesting part that uh, Michael actually brought out is uh, actually he tapped on what uh, the, uh, Dr. Liu Chao has said in Dr. Liu Chao's keynote speech about this prevention. He actually mentioned about this, uh, the, one of the challenges is on the management of uh, uh, dispute settlement. Uh, for example, like giving early warning uh, to prevent any dispute or uh, going for uh, negotiations. Uh, these are something new area. Uh, of course, uh, I've, uh, I'm not sure that what other speakers will touch upon it, uh, but uh, we'll leave it, uh, some part of it, for the Q&A. Uh, now, without further ado, let me turn to the second speaker, Dr. Notch Fari. Dr. Notch Fari uh, will talk about this, the role of arbitrary institutions and awareness of alternative dispute resolution. Yep, Doc, the floor is on you, and if you don't mind, if uh, I think that you take more than 15 minutes, I will just give you an early warning. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Early morning, eh? Okay, uh, is it okay? Okay, 15 minutes left. All right, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Craig. Uh, uh, first, and, first and foremost, I would like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Sundar Raju for this warm uh, invitation and also this um, uh, uh, seminar, our event today. Uh, okay, um, the question um, uh, is about, uh, I believe that it's more towards, uh, because I'm from university, so maybe I can give some perspective in terms of um, our higher education uh, in Malaysia, um, especially. Uh, well, when it comes to uh, arbitral, uh, arbitration, um, they, uh, it is important for us to note that there is two different, uh, two different uh, terms, which is first is academic qualification and secondly, uh, professional training. 
for recognition, right? Um, so uh, when it comes to this, both uh, um, uh, it is actually interchangeable because um, uh, we have um, a, a few uh, course uh, in our university uh, regarding the arbitration, right? Uh, but um, when it comes to um, that is for academic qualification. I believe that um, we uh, uh, in Malaysia, especially and in in uh, Asian region, we have a few university which offer arbitration course. Um, uh, but uh, sadly, in Malaysia, um, we have um, uh, uh, we do not have any specific course for arbitration. But we have a specific, which is compulsory course for the alternative dispute resolution, uh, for awareness for students uh, and for the not just for undergraduate but also for for postgraduate. And I am very happy to 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 uh, came to know that uh, just now that uh, Doctor Doctor Liu Chao uh, mentioned uh, about the establishment of um, institute or center, I believe, uh, which cater for uh, capacity building. And at the same time, not just to train, uh, to produce uh, a good arbitrator, but also as an institution uh, to, uh, to, uh, to have a practical uh, uh, system in terms of being an arbitration center as well. Um, so uh, uh, if, uh, if I may say that um, there should be a cooperation between the industry um, the institution, the professional institution with the academic. Because why? Because um, I believe that um, we do have um, uh, the subject on arbitration and the subject of ADR in the university as for the exposure for our graduate, for our student, for our future um, uh, person or individual that will venture into arbitration. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the cooperation would be, for example, that we have um, uh, in other institutions, for example, in UK, they have some certain, uh, let's say, if you enroll into this particular Masters of Arbitration or Masters in Alternative Dispute Resolution, you may get some exemption uh, in terms of uh, uh, for the um, uh, uh, some uh, uh, syllabus for the training uh, to become a chartered arbitrator, for example. So, um, because uh, in university, we prepare for the basic uh, for the basic understanding uh, they also learn about what is, what is the difference between arbitration um, the main contract and also arbitration agreement for example uh, for example in malaysia they also learn about uh, what are the differences between the model law okay and the uh, 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 for example the law of the seat the basic principle of competence and competence this is something which uh, we covered but in the practical aspect uh, we also uh, uh, need the support from the institution and although we have uh, a role play for uh, example uh, like a mock arbitration for them to get involved to get to know further on what is arbitration and what is mediation and to the certain extent what is uh, adjudication in Malaysia um, uh, uh, but the practical touch I believe that uh, uh, the collaboration between in the institution um, the professional institution will enhance more or will put more value towards the subject or, or to the topic itself. So, uh, uh, well, um, this is something which I believe that um, the, uh, the, the, um, the scenario that we have, again, I must emphasize that apart from academic qualification, I believe that um, the uh, certification from the institution also is very important because that will actually constitute a professional qualification per se in our law. For example, in order to become an arbitrator, we need to have some certain qualification which is agreed by parties or which is recognized by the institution. And what are the qualification means? It does it just not means the academic qualification, but also training wise. So um, I think to the extent in Malaysia, we have uh, some proposed, uh, we propose to have like university arbitration. What does it mean by university arbitration? Uh, like uh, they mentioned by our panel just now, due to the fact that we have quite a number of cases, uh, more cases uh, in court. Uh, why not we have the alternative uh, place or venue or seat, uh, which is, for example, not just the institution, but also for at university. So this is something that um, uh, the, um, uh, some viable uh, recommendation that I feel that 
we can uh, discuss or we can explore in future. Um, I think apart from that, the most important part, um, I think uh, another thing that we need to remember is um, when it comes to the arbitration to make it, um, um, uh, to put it as a, a value, as one of the alternative dispute resolution mechanism is to having a research and to have uh, the facts which uh, which uh, can uh, enhance uh, the, the conduct of the arbitration uh, in future. Because we believe that arbitration is confidential in nature. We don't know actually what happened from, case, uh, from one case to another. So by having a good best practices, for example, what are the good and best practices for arbitration? Um, the institute, I believe, together with the university, we can conduct a research because um, the facts are there. Um, uh, um, although that uh, I think it is worthy for, 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 for us to, to, have, to take a look into the research aspect so that we can have a better uh, uh, conduct of the arbitration in future. So I believe that is, uh, am I answering the question? Yeah, okay, right, Dato, okay. I think that, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. No Fachri. Yeah, we talk about this cooperation between the industry and uh, and uh, uh, those uh, not only academicians but also uh, experts. Uh, uh, beside uh, UTM, your faculty actually played their role. Uh, AI ADR, Asia Institute of Alternative Dispute Resolution, also played their role. It can be a bridge uh, between the academician and expert on one hand, and the industrial industries uh, sector on the other hand. In fact, if Paxo being set up uh, is uh, cross uh, jurisdiction, cross languages, culture, and etc., uh, uh, it would be a big challenge uh, for all the training institutions to think about how to train uh, different, different, uh, different experts from different jurisdictions, uh, different backgrounds. Uh, this is a big challenge for us. Uh, it's a good time that we have this session to rethink about how should we provide uh, training on that. Yep. Uh, before uh, you actually, you, yep, I think we wonder if I can leave it up uh, for Q&A time. Uh, let me pass to the third speaker first, third panel speaker, Mr. Lam Wai Long. Uh, he's a practitioner, very active practitioner, and I think he want to share something about uh, qualifications and alternative dispute resolution. Now, the mic is you. Uh, thank you. Um, His Excellency, uh, Dr. Liu Chao. Secretary General of IPAXO, uh, co-founders of AIADR, uh, Professor Tato Sundaraju, and also Tato Kwek Yiming, uh, who is also the moderator today. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak at this uh, prestigious uh, platform. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Now, I am a lawyer, and I will be sharing my experience as to the uh, current situation in Malaysia, uh, the litigation scene and also the ADR scene, and what would be the changes that uh, actually brought about by this COVID-19. Um, first of all, I would like to explain that uh, in Malaysia, the court system has actually improved over the years. Uh, it has uh, improved so much to the extent that the uh, clients, my clients, uh, have actually come forward to suggest that we take out arbitration and just refer the matter to court. Now, that is the uh, scene that we are seeing at the moment. Now, why is that so? In Malaysia, uh, for the past 10 years, they have been uh, implemented uh, a lot of uh, measures to improve the efficiency of the court system. Now, uh, commercial uh, court judges and also civil court judges are required to finish a matter uh, within nine months to 12 months for a very complicated case that will need to finish it within 18 months at the most. So compared to arbitration, uh, normally the timeline uh, used would be uh, in the region of two years, sometimes three years. A very efficient uh, like uh, uh, fast-track arbitrations can be finished within nine months, but unfortunately, the fast-track arbitration is not popularly used in Malaysia. 
Now, that is actually the current scene in Malaysia. In summary, the court litigations appear uh, to be more efficient than arbitration. Now, what actually happened when the COVID-19 pandemic happened in Malaysia? The courts have actually shut down at least twice. Uh, once when it was uh, the control movement order was implemented by our government of Malaysia, the courts were not conducting any cases. And then recently, because of the third wave of COVID-19 in Malaysia, the courts in the uh, uh, main region, especially Kuala Lumpur, have also uh, been shut down. So no hearings can actually go on. Now, when these matters happen, this scene is occurring in Malaysia. Now, what changes has, immediate changes have uh, actually been seen is that the clients now asking, let's avoid arbitration. Let's avoid litigation. Is there a way for us to bring both parties together and negotiate privately to try to come and find a solution? Now, that is actually the immediate reaction from the clients, from the users. Why is that so? Because if you are to file an action in court or to litigate or to arbitrate uh, your dispute, then you will know that in the long run, it will never going to complete within a short period of time. Meaning to say that you will see your money being held up and uh, because of litigation, prolong litigation and prolong arbitration process, and you will actually add more pressure to your cash flow. So the preference now uh, for the users in Malaysia, whenever they have dispute, they would rather go for mediation, go for negotiation. Now, if you look at this uh, situation, what do you see in the future? Now, there will be more and more people having, uh, uh, I mean, faith in uh, resolving disputes outside of courts, outside of arbitration. If negotiations and mediations during the COVID-19 pandemic era are successful. Now, if you ask me, this would be and could be a turning point for negotiation and dispute, what we call that the mechanism of dispute prevention would prevail over courts and arbitrations in the future. Why, in my view, that especially for cross-border transactions and also court litigations have become prevalent is because there is a lack of trust uh, between the parties. There must be something to bring the mindset uh, for them to try to negotiate and mediate. And pandemic COVID-19 actually is a factor. Now, once the pandemic COVID-19 is gone, would there be any other way for you to bring the parties together and try to see the differences without going to court and without going to arbitration? Ipaxo, I believe, because of their objective, will fill in this gap. Why is that so? Because mediation being such a useful tool has not been encouraged and has not been uh, adequately used by the users. So, in my experience, when a case go through proper negotiation and proper mediation process, more than 50% of the cases can be settled out of court, out of arbitration, only if they are properly guided and they are uh, being brought to understand each other's differences. Now, how do you actually do that? It is actually through negotiations and understanding and a good system. And I believe that the framework under IPAXO will be able to do that. We have seen many successful mediated cases in Malaysia. Whether it is in arbitration, ongoing arbitration matters, or ongoing court litigation matters. And we have tried that and it's tested. And I have even asked my client, they came to me and said that if I were to spend one million to fight a case in arbitration to get what I want, I would rather spend one million to get the same thing that I get or even lesser through mediation. 
because mediation, it gives you fast resolution and it is actually more friendly, less acrimonious, you get the result that mostly people would be happy about. So I, my conclusion of my talk is this. First, the COVID-19 has opened the eyes of the users. They are more willing to mediate because they see more clearly now the flaws arising from court litigation and arbitration. They would now re more realize that using mediation and negotiation would be the way forward to resolve disputes between the parties. Not that I say that it would mediation and negotiation can resolve 100% of the disputes, but it can definitely reduce the number if the parties are more open-minded to using mediation and negotiation as a first tier of a dispute resolution mechanism. The only thing that why litigation and arbitration are still commonly used is because of the fact that mediation has been underutilized and underpromoted. Why is it underpromoted? People do not see benefits from mediating a case. Lawyers would think that if a case is mediated success successfully, their fees will be gone. So, you know, when you have lawyers involved in mediation, you will know for sure, more or less, that the mediation will come to a negative result. Now, of course, there are believers who are lawyers who would like the system to succeed. And in those cases, most of the times, success would come. So I think and I believe that Ipaxo will fill in this gap, especially for those cross-border transactions, because it will create trust and between nations from different backgrounds, and it will eventually reduce arbitration as the preferred mode of resolution between cross-border transactions uh, nations. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sundra, and also uh, His Excellency, Dr. Liu Chao. Thank you, uh, Wai Long. Thank you, Mr. Lam Wai Long. Uh, Wai Long uh, touched upon the uh, right uh, uh, into the topics of uh, the, the, the rethinking about this uh, ADR post and in the midst of this uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, particularly talk about the role of uh, uh, how to how to tap along uh, into the, the entire new set about setup of Ipaxo. Uh, wonder if uh, I can ask the uh, last questions to all the speakers in relation to Ipaxo. Uh, to to Michael will be this: uh, What you expect? What is your expectation on Ipaxo? Uh, in establishing new ADR rules and platform post COVID-19, and to Dr. Uh, Not Fatri as an academic academicians, what's your expectation about uh, on Ipaxo in uh, providing uh, a training for different uh, person from different background around the world? And uh, why don't we touch a lot upon uh, this uh, Ipaxo? Uh, uh, Maybe you can just give us some, some further thought about what your expectation uh, from the way forward. Yep. Uh, shall we start with Michael first? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Craig. Expectation. Uh, expectation is rather high, I think, because the formation of Ipaxo uh, I was also partly involved by persuading the ASEAN members to support it Pakso because originally they were a bit worried that this is uh, a, a China's agenda to control uh, control the other country under Belt and Road Initiative. However, after the discussion, after knowing that uh, Pakso is going to be uh, a consultative uh, body uh, and uh, after consultation with deliberation with all the stakeholders, new practical ADR rules will be introduced to facilitate uh, a justifiable and equitable international order. 
I think this is very important that we have new rules because we find that countries within the Belt Road Initiative uh, may not have a may may have something very similar, uh, especially in dispute prevention first, uh, and then may perhaps mediation. Only then you go to arbitration or litigation. The the method is very different. So the expectation is there must be consultation between all the stakeholder before any new rules are introduced, so that more and more countries will, will join and uh, adopt uh, these new rules. Um, I think it's important to look at the platform. The platform is good for, for all the stakeholders to, to share information, uh, to share resources, and to help train legal talents. Uh, it's no point talking about mediation, arbitration, when there is nobody to do it. You know? So it's very important that uh, Paxo can play that role to use it as a platform to, to promote legal talents, uh, legal training, so that they have international vision and there will be a team of experts to do this uh, high standard work. Uh, it's, it's so important to have the people there. For example, our arbitration center, at the moment, there's no director. So uh, a lot of arbitration work has stopped. We also talked to the government to, to make sure that a new director is quickly appointed. Uh, otherwise, uh, in the pandemic situation, many, many cases cannot go through arbitration uh, if, it, if the body is not working properly. Uh, these are my uh, a little bit comment on uh, Ipaxo. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Dr. Fafli, would you like to add uh, on, on right. particularly on those training parts? Okay, uh, if I may add, um, um, uh, the, uh, when I believe that uh, COVID-19, although it is um, the pandemic uh, that we are facing right now, um, um, and quite a number of countries globally, not just Malaysia, but it is a medium for us to meet um, virtually. It is not just uh, because before COVID-19, uh, we need to go to China and China need to go to Malaysia, for example. But by having COVID-19, we enhance the technology. We enhance the technology. We can meet, we can greet, we can have this webinar here in Malaysia. Um, our counterpart, Ipakso in China. Same goes to not just uh, to the extent of having this webinar, but we can have also a training we can have also a collaboration uh, between APAXO and also Malaysian uh, to, for, to enhance uh, this uh, profession, uh, arbitration and mediation. Because why? Um, um, uh, like what that uh, Mr. Wailun just now mentioned, it is a behavior, for me, it is a behavior of parties. We would like to have a new rules. We must have a roadshow or an advocacy so that people know and people have awareness of what is mediation, what are the benefits of mediation, why mediation is very important, right? Same goes to arbitration, same goes to other dispute resolution mechanism. So by having these rules, it is not just a consultative uh, move, but uh, we need to have um, advocacy uh, uh, roadshow, for example, awareness, um, to all, um, we cannot limit uh, this particular subject or topic exclusively only towards the professional. Because I believe the person who involved in businesses have a different, have a various background. And this is the, um, uh, the segment that we need to tap for them to come to us as an institution. And by having doing that, for example, we have 22 million of citizens in Malaysia. We have more than 100 million um, Asian-wide population. And we have quite a number of billion worth of investment coming in to each country in Asia. So by having these rules, it means that it is more towards consultative consultation between parties, it is also awareness that we need to create for them in order for them to understand 
what is mediation, why we must have Singapore Convention on Mediation, why only certain countries uh, ratify the convention, and at the end of the day, the, business will, the businesses will utilize this method of dispute resolution mechanism to, uh, to ensure that it can be a successful dispute resolution forum for them to resolve their issues. Because I believe businesses, they do not want to break their uh, relationship, right? We do not want to break our relationship between Malaysia and other countries in, in the whole wide world, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter lah, whether uh, in US now, whether uh, Trump or Biden won or who's become the next president of the United States. That is also irrelevant because why? At the end of the day, we are the one with our behavior, we try to unite ourselves with different background, different nationality, because we can have uh, a common understanding towards uh, these particular uh, issues. That's, that, I think that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. It's very valuable uh, uh, idea and uh, contribution from Dr. North Fatsri. Come, Bailo. Yep. Um, thank you, uh, Tatu Kwek. Uh, I just keep it short. Uh, my expectation is that, uh, well, my observation firstly is that uh, Ipaxo started off with a good footing in the sense that, at least in Asia, we have such an institution that doesn't come from the West. And it actually tailor-made to suit our Asian community. Now, this I would feel personally, even looking from a Malaysian perspective, the Western institutions have not paid enough attention to Asia in terms of culture and um, in, in, in their system. So then Ipaxo would be one system that is closer to us. I think the challenges is that Ipaxo has even given a little bit more uh, than uh, com when compared to other institutions is that it has got a personal touch uh, attention uh, the system that has been implemented. They encourage uh, dispute prevention uh, more than dispute resolution. So then dispute prevention, you need communication. And this is the personal touch that Ipaxo has put into their system, their institution. And that's very good because it's more associated with Asian culture, I would say. Um, so the expectation would be this so-called personal touch uh, not only that we have actually thought about as an objective, but it would eventually, eventually be successfully implemented with the uh, involvement of the re relevant communities in Asia uh, to help them to truly understand the differences between nations. So once I think that is done, uh, success will be uh, you know, in sight. So uh, again, uh, thank you very much. Uh, to uh, Dr. DG Liu, uh, Tatu Kwek, and also Professor Tato Sundra Raju. Thank you, Wai Long. Wai Long actually is uh, one of the first few person I met about a few years ago, besides Tato Sundra and also uh, Dr. Liu Chao, that they advocate something for Asia, um, particularly on this area of dispute prevention. Um, therefore, uh, he, he felt a lot when the IPASO actually set up and he got a lot of expectations. Similarly, for those panelists, I heard very clearly, you do have expectations on this, uh, the, the success of uh, a new international organizations in preventing dispute or settling the dispute. And I'm sure that uh, what you have said today, the idea you have advocated today uh, is being heard and being written down in writing by the Secretary General of IPASO. Uh, this is not the last rethinking about the way forward of ADR. This is just the beginning. We've got a lot of work to do, like what Dr. Liu Chao said. We put our mind together. We have a new technology now. We have a new normal situation. We can communicate, even though we can't travel to the other countries, but we can contribute. With that, uh, I thank you very much to the panelists, to Wai Long, to Dr. Noch Fabri, to Mr. Michael Chai. Thank you very much. Uh, May I pass the mic back to the uh, to Heather, the MC, and then we close this session. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for coming and thank you everyone for joining us in this webinar. And it's really insightful and a lot of information has been shared. Um, now we have a very short ceremony where we are going to present a little souvenir to our panelists. Let us welcome Dr. Professor Sundra Raju uh, to present. <laughs> yes. Yes. And we will definitely arrange for that.
Correct. So we will let us have this. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Nofazri, for coming. A very short ceremony. And thank you, Mr. Lamwardnur. <laughs> and this one is for Mr. Michael. <laughs> thank you. Yes, that's Dr. Liu Chao as well. Yes. And last but not least, we have our moderators, Dr. Quack. And our Vice President. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for all of you. Thank you so much. You know, thank, you, thank you so much, uh, all of you. And uh, it has been a very successful uh, webinar. And I congratulate uh, His Excellency, the Secretary General, uh, Dr. Liu Chao, for giving us an excellent speech and then good insight from all the Dr. Quack and, uh, and all the participants, including Michael and Nofajiri and Lam. And I, I also appreciate the, the Secretary Heather and Apri organized this thing. Thank you so much again. Uh, goodbye and God bless. <laughs>